Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad I'm here tonight to hear <coughs> the word of God from the elders and uh, to hear and uh, to learn from them uh, that the main things when you are learning from elders and you can hear their words and you can follow uh, the steps. So I thank God for that. I thank God for all of them who've been uh, working a lot <coughs> for our generation. Like I said <coughs> last night, I remember I've been talking with Brother uh, Gibson about that, and I said I am uh, the fourth generation of the body of Christ in Haiti. The fourth generation after St. Brother Nick Greek <coughs> came to Haiti, uh -huh. so I'm, I'm the fourth uh, generation. I thank God for that, and uh, I am still in the body of Christ, and, uh, and uh, my father always taught me, he taught me how when, when, I have, when I go to a place like a meeting, I, to sit down and to hear the elders, and you learn from them, and when you will be go up, you, you know what to do. So I thank God for this man of God, and for this great family here. They are my family, and I used to come here for many times since uh, Brother Wayne, he did my hair today. And I said, you take uh, Brother Shea Job. He used to cut my hair. <laughs> and I remember I was to his barber shop, and he used to uh, cut my hair. How do you see my hair tonight? How do you see it? It's good? Yeah, don't see it. Like you got old. Is it a good job? <laughs> oh, praise God. There is joy when we come in the house of God. Exactly. And uh, when we are coming, you know, sometimes you, you know some, uh, you've been through something very difficult daytime. But when you come in the house of God, the apostle of Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And uh, that the reason we, we are coming here tonight to be here uh, is not healing only for our body, but we are coming to receive healing for our soul and for our spirit. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, the spirit of God can change our life. Thank you so much for this good word about the change, uh, to be, to change. And uh, the song that Sister Moses, she said, uh, little by little, uh, and we always say, pray à pray, à chaque jour, dans toute phase dans la vie, Jésus a changé moi. I thank God Jesus can change me tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. When you are coming to God, you need to be uh, willing and let God do the job and let God uh, clean you up and change your life. Uh, that Paul said, uh, first, uh, second Corinthians 5, he said, someone is in Christ, is a new creature. Uh, where he say that? Uh, second Corinthians, the Corinthians say, second Corinthians 5, verse 17, I think. If, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature in Christ. So <clears throat> uh, that's talking about to be changed. Yes. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, be in Christ, uh, you can be with Christ. 
You can be with Christ. Sometimes you can be without Christ. But thank God tonight we are with Christ. Amen. And he said, he is a new creature. All things pass away. Hallelujah. And behold, all things are become new. Thank God for my life today. And uh, like, you know, everybody got mistake in our life. But God can change us. Uh, my father used to say, uh, when you go to church, it's like you bring your car to the garage. And uh, he's going to repair and to fix you back. So we are coming tonight so God can fix us back. And ch you know, put something new in us. Uh, good tires in us. Change our oil, you know. And the oil is the understanding of the word of God. And uh, we thank God so we can change to become a new creature in Christ. And you remember Jesus, when Jesus, uh, Nicodemus, in John 3, I think uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And uh, he, he, he needs something. He came to Jesus and he said, uh, Jesus, how I can do uh, John, uh, John 3? Uh, Nicodemus saying to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter to the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That change, to be changed, born again. And verse 4, verse 5, Jesus said to him, Jesus and said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except, is that correct? Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that's something we need. When you are coming, you will receive the baptism in water and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That can change our life. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, you know, to receive the, uh, to clean up from our sins. But the uh, baptizing of the uh, of water and the Holy Ghost came to church, and uh, you know when you receive the Holy Ghost, you uh, you become a witness of Christ, and uh, you you know what God can change in your life. And Jesus said, if you don't born, be born again, if you don't change, and uh, you do receive the water baptized and the water of the Holy Ghost, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So we need that tonight. Amen? We need to receive uh, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and uh, to change our life. You see, uh, but the mother was talking about David. He said, and uh, Psalm 51, David said, clean, uh, create in me. O oh Lord, a pure heart. Uh, he said that. He said, create in me. You know, some, uh, like, like you, you take something, you create, God created us from the earth, from the death. He came, we came from the death, and he came and created us to, be, to become a living uh, creature. So David said, create in me. That's something God is doing. God make the change in your life. Amen. Amen. God change you. Create in me a clean heart. He's talking about your thinking. Uh, who you are. God can change you. Oh God. And we knew what? A right spirit in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we knew a right spirit within me. Thank God. We can become a new creature in God. We can become a new yes. creation. God can change our life with the love of Christ in our life. And we are not the same person that we used to be. And, uh, you know, when you are in Christ, you know, sometimes 
people they are in church and they still living the same way that they used to be. Uh, they, they used to be, and uh, it's very bad. I, I'm not going in talking too much about that, but we, sometimes you got some people, they are in church and they're still smoking. They're still smoking. Some smoke and uh, they still uh, drink beer, uh, uh, alcohol, and all kind of stuff. But this is something we need, God. We come to be the light of the world. Is that correct? Jesus said you are the light of the world. And uh, when Jesus said that, you cannot put the lamp under the table. It's, it's in Matthew 13, say that. Uh, Matthew 13, Jesus said you cannot put the lamp under the, under the table, but you put it uh, over the table. You, you are the light of the world. And he said, you are the salt of the world. That's the changing that the Lord made in you to be light. And this darkness world, we, we are living in a in, 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 in world of darkness. But thank God you can be a light. We can be shy so they can see Christ in us. My father always said, and uh, when, when you go to church, it's not only you go to church, you sit down in church, and you have your Bible, you can sing beautiful songs, but you need something inside of you. Praise God. I need it inside of me. And uh, you said that. They, they, uh, he said, David uh, is a man after my heart because God don't look outside. But he look inside. Oh God, change me tonight. Oh God, change me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Neither do men like a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think he's, he's talking also about the salt. We are the salt in the world. That's what God did in our life when we come to. And you remember when uh, uh, Peter <laughs> spoke in, uh, before the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 37. I'm sorry. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 37, and they heard about the word of God. Uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 37, and uh, now when they heard this, they heard about Jesus Christ, and they heard about the salvation, and they said, they were pricked in their heart and say unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 What shall we do? And let's go down in 38 to see. And then Peter said unto them, what? Repent. Praise God. Repent. We see to change. Our... Our style of life, to change your life. Repent. Regret what you did in your life. And, uh, you know, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall what? Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you need to change. You need to change. You need to repent. Baptize. Hallelujah. For the remission of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. 
So David was a man. God loved him. But how I can say it tonight uh, for myself when he said, David, God loved David. And he forgave David. But the same way, we've been there as well. We've been like David. We've been insane. And, uh, you know, what he said, John 3, 16, what he said, God so loved. He's not talking about David now. Not only David. John 3, 16, what he said, God so loved the world. Thank God for the love of God tonight. The same way he did for David, he can do for me tonight. He can do it for me. I, I need to know him, to serve him, and to love him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only big heart and son, that whosoever, he's talking not for one, but he said, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, amen, but have what? Everlasting life. Thank God for everlasting life. So we are, we are, not, we are, not, we are not changing. We are not, not change. Today and tomorrow I will return in the same way I was to be. But we are changing for eternal things. We are changing, you know, to be like Christ. To be like him. Praise God. To be like him. We need to, to be like him. And I said, uh, how he said that? First John, first John, first, first John 3. Oh, he said, we will be, well, we are not good right now, but when we will be like him, First John 2, who said that? I can't remember the verse. Uh, I don't have my French Bible with me, I'm sorry. But he said, uh, yeah. First John 2, 3? Yeah. Beloved, now we are the son of God. Amen. And did not you repair what we shall be? Yes. Thank you. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That's change. We'll be like him. So that's, that's the future he's talking about. This, that's something that's a process. That we, we need steps, you know, step by step, little by little. We will be like him. That the reason, you know, you are not going and sit down. I will be like Jesus. You, know, you need to suffer for him. You need to hear the word of God. He said, the word of God is like a, a hammer sometimes, he said. It's like a hammer. And some, 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 somewhere in the Bible, he said, the word of God is like a sword, something you can sword. How did, that's the word? Yeah. So, you know, the word of God can change you. And uh, I think Hebrew, Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4, 12 said that. Sharper, like the word of God. Uh, Hebrews 4, say that? 4, 12, thank you. Hebrews 4, 12 said about the word of God. We can change by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. Uh, number one, we change by repentance. He can repent and change. Number two, by the Holy Ghost. But number two, by, uh, the, uh, by the word of God. For the word of God is quick. Amen. And powerful. And sharper than any, help me with that, please, told word. Piercing even to the Dividing our son, their soul, that you to help me, please, with the English and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and is what? 
descend of the tooth and enters of the earth. Right. Right. That's the word of God. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we can change when we repent, number two, when you receive the Holy Ghost, and number three, when we hear the word of God. And number four, you can be changed when you are under a ministry, uh, under the ministry of God. And uh, we are uh, Hebrews 3, uh, Hebrews 13, verse 17. When you are under the ministry of God, that can change you. you know? And uh, obey them that have the word over you. And submit yourself for their watch for your souls. That when, when, he, when he's talking about watching, he, he's, uh, you know, taking care of you and watch your progress. He's like a shepherd. Uh, that's the word of the shepherd. That's, that's his ministry. As they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is what? Unprofitable for you. Thank God for change tonight. Hallelujah. The word of God can change us. The spirit of God can change us. The ministry of God rule over you and lead you and to know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God for the change tonight. Hallelujah. He changed my life. He gave me a chance again. Like you said, I was in church. I, I was always with my father in, uh, in church. But I did mistake in my life as well. But God has mercy for me. Praise God. Everybody got mistakes. And you, I, I remember you said, you, you talked about uh, when Jesus said, cast out the, the storm. After, uh, what verse you talk? The other yeah. day, John? Yeah. John 11. I, yeah. He said, if you, if you don't have sin, what he said again? Uh, cast the first storm. Oh, thank God for the mercy tonight. I thank God for his mercy tonight. Hallelujah. He loves me. Hallelujah. He changed me. He saved me. Hallelujah. He's doing something in my life. So I can obey to his word and to hear his voice. To, to change and to, to work hard in our spiritual life to be in the bride of Christ. We need to change to, and uh, to go. So Psalm 101, Psalm 101, if you can go with me, please. I'm not going and stay long, but <clears throat> praise the Lord. Psalm 101. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, while I sing. Or in verse 2, uh, Psalm 101. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Or oh, when will to come unto me, I will walk with thee in my house. You can read with me. We go to 8 verse. Just read it with me. And uh, verse 3, what he said. Uh, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. 
I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. And uh, verse 4. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Amen? Verse 5. And uh, who's so privy? Privately? Mm -hmm. Slandered his neighbor. Him <clears throat> will I cut off. <laughs> In that heart and high loop. And the proud heart will not I suffer. Verse 6, I think he's going to verse 6. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may be dwell with me. He that walk in perfect way, he shall save me. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, verse 7, that's a that's wonderful word over there. He that walk, he said, shall not dwell with, in my house. He that tell lies shall not tell me in my sight. Verse 8. Amen. What he said in verse 8? Oh, that's, that's all? I will ill destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked. Those from the city of the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So God loved David. Uh, number one, because David were a quick repenter. He has a quick repenter. He repent very quick. And he knows, he knows what he did. Psalm 51, you know, I'm not going in with all, all of that. David was a quick repenter. Repent. Uh, number two, David was merciful, uh, merciful. Like you said, he didn't kill his enemies. He was a merciful man. And uh, if you go to Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, David can kill uh, Saul, but he didn't kill him. He was a merciful man. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 5 and 7. And David said, Messenger unto men of Yazbag, and say unto them, Blessed be you of the Lord that you have showed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And uh, I think verse 6 to 7. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will. We quit you this kindness because you have done these things. And verse 7, therefore now let your hand be uh, strengthened and be your valiant for your master's soul is dead. And also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. So David was a merciful man. First Samuel First Samuel 26, verse 7. First uh, Samuel 26, verse 7 to 12. Uh, David, you need to have mercy. It's the same way God has mercy for us. We need to have mercy to one another. And First Samuel chapter 26, verse 7. So David and Abigail came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping uh, within the trench, and his <coughs> spares walk in the ground as his what? Bosse, but Abner, and the people lay round about him. If you help me, please, uh, to read that, it will be better. Verse 8, then said uh, Abishai to David, uh, God had delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him. Smite him? Smite. 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 Thank you. I pray thee with the spear even to the earth at once and I will not smite, smite, smite. him the second time. 
And uh, that's, that's David talking here. Uh, and David said to Abigail, destroy him not, for who can stretch for his hand against the Lord? Huh. And I'm dead. And be uh, uh, guilt, guiltless. And verse 10, David didn't kill him. David said, for Tamar, as the Lord live, the Lord shall smite him. All his days shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. And uh, verse 11 to 12, the Lord forbid that I should stretch for my hand against the Lord's anointed, but I pray thee, take to, to spare that it is it is busted, and the cross of water, and let us go. And verse uh, 12, so David took the spear and the cross of water from Saul's uh, bolster, and they get them away. And no man saw it, no knew it, neither awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen unto them. So David was a merciful man. He didn't kill Saul. Do you remember? He was a man of God. Yeah. He was in that town. The, and, uh, yeah. He was the man of God, so he was a king. David didn't kill him. So I said David was a quick repenter. Number two, David was uh, merciful to his enemies. Uh, number, number three, uh, David didn't worship false god. Uh, false god. Uh, false, false god. Yeah. So he didn't do that. Uh, David loved God with all his heart. Uh, he loves God. Psalm 89, the last one, I'm going to sit down. Psalm 89, verse 16. David was a man after the heart of God. He loved God. He loved his enemies. And he didn't kill them. And the Lord have mercy upon David. And thy name shall they rejoice all the day. And thy righteousness shall they be exalted. And uh, verse 17. Uh, For do I the glory of the strength and their favor, favor uh, our own shall be exalted. Uh, verse 8, uh, 7, uh, 18. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, verse 19, uh, what he said. Then to spark in a vision to thy Holy One, and said, I have laid help. Upon one that is mighty, I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Praise the Lord. And uh, <laughs> that plenty. Uh, that's a wonderful scriptures over there. And David uh, is talking about David in this song. And uh, verse 19, then to speak a vision to verse 20, what he said. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. He was his servant. Yeah. He knows him. And verse 21, with whom my hand shall be established. So David was a type of Christ in the Old Testament. He was a type of Jesus Christ, he's talking here. My arm also shall strengthen him. Uh, and uh, verse 22, the enemy shall not exalt upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. That's David. You know, God so loved him. And verse 23, and I will beat down his what? Fools? before his face and plague them that hate him. You see, how God loved David. 
verse 24, and but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Praise the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with who? David. And, and my name shall his horn be exalted. And verse 25, I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand and the rivers. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are so glad tonight. God love us also. He give us another chance. That's another chance we have tonight to come to him. That's very good example back there in the Bible to love your brothers and your sisters, to have mercy and to repent and to be born again, to receive the Holy Ghost, to receive the word of God that can change your life, to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the world. Hallelujah. He can change you. So I thank God for the word tonight. I'm so happy. And one more time. I am in Saxon, Missouri. So I've been uh, thinking about you, praying for you. I did COVID-19, you know, uh, COVID-19 separate people. But thank God I'm here tonight to right. see you again. Right. And uh, like I asked for, what his name again, the black guy? The big? Brother Dal. Brother Dal, yeah. I remember the last time I was here, we've been, we've been uh, preaching together. He, had, he got a big voice. Loud voice, he can yes. sing. Oh wow! Yes, yes. So he left. You know, we don't know tomorrow. No. So what? Do what we can do today. Yes, yes, hallelujah. So love your brothers and your sisters. So, and like the, the God love you, continue to do what the Lord called you to do, and keep courage. Uh, Exodus. Let me give you this chapter. Exodus. 17 verse 8. Uh, let's continue to all this ministry. Exodus, uh, give me that one, the last one. Exodus uh, 17 verse 8. Uh, you see, when 8 to 11, we we'll go just read it. I'm not going to keep you long, so don't sleep on me, please. So <laughs> he said, then came Amalek and fought with his wife, fight with Zion and with him. And go down, please. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the word of God in my hand. Thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. This is the divine order. And uh, verse 10. Uh, so Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ir, uh -huh, went, went up to the top of the hill. And verse 11. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that what? Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So we need to give your hand to this ministry, to support this ministry, to pray for this ministry. This is not our business here. This is God's business. Uh, we, are, we are not coming to say, this is my church. This is God's church. And he knows his people. It's not how many, how many people coming in the church. It's about your heart, what you come to do. And uh, I said, Jesus said, when two or three come together, I am in the midst of them. So I'm glad tonight I'm here to be in church with you tonight. And I rejoice. And I thank God and for his protection. And since I've been around here, and I am I'm at home with the people of God and the body of Christ. And like 
I don't go into Babylon. Mother Nigui went to Babylon, you know. Mother Nick, and I don't go to Babylon. And uh, Brother Nick, uh, to build churches in Haiti, do he went to, I, I, I think, he went to Catholic churches. He went to, to raise money, you know, to do something. But like, I am just go and visit the people of God. I don't go to Babylon. I don't go anywhere. But I visit the people of God. And we do have a project in Haiti to build a church. I don't want to build a church and a false foundation. Are you with me, please? Mm -hmm. I don't want to take money from someone and put his doctrine, his doctrine, and say, Brother Georgie, you need to, to eat bread and wine in your church. You need to, to do Lord's Supper in your church. Uh, don't baptize anymore your people in Jesus' name. Do it in Jesus and God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I, I, I want to keep the line that my father, uh, my father, my father put a line, he said, and uh, uh, Proverb, Proverbs 23. Let's go back, please. Proverbs 23, verse 10. What he said there. Proverbs 23. So I want to, to lay down the foundation over and uh, of the elders. We move not the old landmark. And and what? And enter not into the field of the fatherless. I don't want to go anywhere. But I say with the people of God, you are my family. You are my brothers and my sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, so many people, they leave the body. They, they left the body because they say uh, there is no money in the body. They go to big preacher. They gone and go to big preacher so they can receive money. But, you know, even I'm coming here, I receive some from the people of God. Just a little bit, but that's blessing because this is for my family in Christ. We are one in Christ. So keep praying for me. Pray for the ministry in Haiti. I am not another minister. I am not uh, someone different from you. I am a part of the body of Christ. So the church, uh, the new building, I am, uh, we, are, uh, we are trying to set up in Haiti. This is for the body of Christ. It will be not for my glory. This is for God's glory. Praise the Lord to have more people to come in the body of Christ. So pray, uh, please continue to pray for me. Uh, since I am here, I will be not for long. I will be around, and after I go to the camp meeting, the camp meeting I will not do all the meeting because my wife, she is going and have a surgery on the 16th. She has a surgery from her left breast. So she's in New York, and uh, she went today. They said she got something. They want to take it out. So I'm going for one or two days in the meeting and uh, go back to be with my wife for the surgery. Yeah. So please pray for my wife, Sister Natasha Georges, and pray for my son. You remember my son, Brother Nathan? He is six years old now. He is six years old. Pray for him. And pray for the people of God in Haiti. Pray for our schools and our church. Even situation is still, still difficult in Haiti. We still have church. And the people, they are serving God. I love you very much and thank you for all you've done for me every year. I keep Brother Jeff busy all the week. He keep me busy. We've been painting together. He keep me, uh, Brother Wayne, we've been busy together. I rejoice. I thank God to be with my family. You are my family. You are my brothers and my sisters. I do love you. It's not with my mouth I say that, but I love you with all my heart. May the Lord continue to bless you. And I hope someday, if the Lord make a way, I can come with my family and to have a good time with you again. Thank you so much, and God bless you.